This other question here is from Cougar. He says, plenty of enthusiasts have old sound cards laying around, so this question should be applicable to many listeners. From a purely sound quality perspective, is it better to use modern onboard sound, I assume from a recent motherboard, or a 5- to 10-year-old sound card? Jeff, this is a good question for you. Um, you know, the last time we actually did sort of blind testing uh, was a few years ago, and motherboard audio has improved a little bit since then. Um, but it's it's one of those things where motherboard audio, I think, is is good enough for most people now, and it's really hard to tell the difference between the two unless you're doing kind of back to back um, listening tests. So I still use a sound card. Uh, I prefer how they sound. I found that I'm I'm at least in the past, been able to consistently spot differences, not so much between different sound cards, but between uh, like a de even a halfway decent sound card and uh, a decent onboard solution. So I've sort of tended to sort of stay with that, and there's really no reason not to use an old sound card, uh, as long as you've got sort of driver support in, in the latest version of Windows. Um, but, you know, for most people, um, and probably most speaker setups, um, the onboard audio solutions now are, are fairly good. Um, there hasn't really been a lot happening in audio, so it's not like if you buy a sound card, you get a lot right. of extra features that you're not going to get. Like they've, some of them have sort of fancy noise cancellation routines for microphones and, and things like that. But in terms of, um, you know, sort of core features and sort of basic sound quality, um, unless you're using a motherboard that hasn't implemented audio properly, odds are you're going to have a, a hard time telling the difference. So I've got, uh, Jeff, I've got here in the window... Um, some of the results of your testing of sound cards you did a few years back um, alongside a Realtek motherboard audio um, implementation. And it looks like on this testing in particular there wasn't a huge difference between the different solutions. But um, it seems like every time that we do blind listening tests and you, you get the sound card versus the onboard audio, the sound cards like you can pick out instruments a little bit better. The bass line is clearer. Like things are a little bit better with with the sound card. I think that comes back to uh, it's just a better situation if you don't have to share the the circuit board with everything else that's on like a motherboard, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, and it's also another thing too is in some situations with some onboard audio, we've noticed that if you're listening to, you know, if you're just listening to audio where nothing's going on on the desktop, the system isn't heavily loaded, everything will be fine. But if you, let's say, fire up a, a heavy graphics card load where you've got audio traces passing directly under the graphics card, uh, you can get sort of buzzing and interference, which we've encountered on a couple of motherboards. It's kind of a rare thing, um, but the sound card will be sort of more isolated from that. Um, than an integrated solution. So here's a visual, for the guys in the stream, I've gotten the window a visual representation of the total harmonic distortion and noise of a motherboard under load, motherboard audio under load, versus a couple of sound cards. And you can see there's a lot more uh, spikes in the graphs of, of, dis of distortion for the motherboard audio under load. So, Jeff, you use the sound card. Yep, I, I still use I, a sound card in basically every system I've got, I think. And how old is that sound card? Oh, years old. I, I don't, okay. I'm not, it's old enough that I can't remember exactly which one it is. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I mean, well, there are no new sound cards. Right, well, I there can't. there are. You can buy buy them new, there, but they're like, a lot of them are the same chips. Um, yep. But I use a sound card, and I'm going to build myself a new computer, and when I'm done, I'm going to put that old sound card in it. So and and the, the and this is, these graphs are the reason, right? Like like you said. Um, so I I I gotta say, man, I I think the answer you got to be careful about it. It's not easy to tell the difference between onboard audio and a sound card if you're listening to just one source. Like you don't listen to motherboard audio and think this is terrible, but when you listen to a sound card and motherboard audio back to back, you're like, oh wow. Yes, I can tell the difference. If you hear, listen to the same song on those two different sources, the quality difference is something you understand. So, I don't think it's I don't think the market's changed a lot there. I could be wrong. No, and I'm looking even like it seems that prices have actually crept up a little bit. I'm looking at the the Zonar DX, or maybe that's the the no, that one did used to be expensive. Let's see. The Zonar DSX was sort of our favorite. Now it's it's still reasonably affordable, so it's fifty four dollars right now. Um, and that's kind of the nice thing about a sound card because nothing is really happening 
in the industry, you can have a sound card last through multiple upgrades and really not lose anything. I mean, good sound is, is good sound. It's not really getting better with new cards. Um, so you have something that will last through through multiple, multiple systems. And yeah, the DSX is, is still sort of our favorite um, all around sound card. So you can get it even after rebate, only 44 bucks, which, you know, I think a good investment if you care about sound, if you have nice speakers or nice headphones, if, if you're just, you know, if you're just playing games, honestly, it's probably not worth having a sound card. I found it really, really difficult to tell differences in games. Part of that is because it's really hard to get a repeatable session. Uh, and then part of it is there's just so much sound going on in, in games that it's it's hard to say what's better uh, than another. So, Well, and the myth, the myth, almost a myth. I mean, there were some attempts, but the idea that your sound card would accelerate your gaming <laughs> performance. Hey, that was true like 10 years ago. <laughs> they tried, right? It never really stuck for very long. There was never like yeah. some great example of a product that, that where it like succeeded. Like a real tried and creative creative sued them and then creative like pretended like it was going to do acceleration and nobody really did it and then Microsoft kind of crushed all that with with window with Vista was not it Battlefield games did Vista, it yeah. yeah yeah I think Battlefield hmm. something or maybe Battlefield 2 was I think one of the last games that actually used 3D audio I seem to remember doing some testing on creatives cards and that was the only one where you could like have all of the sounds playing at once right um, but now CPUs are fast enough they mix enough that I mean the audio is not a problem it's just not a problem because we're doing it other ways so, in fact, it's kind of weird. AMD did this true audio thing where they have DSP acceleration in new Radeons. <laughs> it's also, I think, the same DSPs they put into the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And, like, I I want to test, like, does this help performance? Does it help quality? And everyone saw a ping AMD, and they're like, yeah, you know, there's a few things that use it, but then there's just there's no <laughs> I example. Think only it's like Thief. I think it's the only game that I've seen that uses it. Yeah. So and even then, like I, I, there's no measurable performance difference with it that I could see. So I don't know. 